Mr. Works at the, uh, it's the gift booth, right? Or the accessories the booth? The leather man booth. Gift booth. It's a working elevator here inside the Eagle. Oh, wow. Leatherman used to be the deepest, darkest mystery that the gay subculture had. The sex lives and drug intake of these tough homos made even the rowdiest straight hell's angels look like pussies. They were like a gang of butt-fucking werewolves. Splits your balls, your left and your right. When AIDS came on the scene, the Leathermen were right on the firing line. Today, catching one in full regalia outside the small handful of leather clubs that remain is like spotting a leprechaun. Fearing that they may soon be totally extinct, I decided to dive headfirst into their world. The last of the great New York leather bars is the Eagle, so I started my quest there. Luckily, I soon met the best guy I could have hoped for. Christophe Andre is a longtime leather man, and he was the winner of last year's Mr. Eagle beauty pageant. He also sells handcuffs and dildos in an elevator at the bar. So that's two eighty-seven seventy-four. You gonna want to? Do you want a bag for this? Now, what happens tonight is tonight we call. Let's call on code. On Thursdays at the Eagle. Okay, I think I saw that sign. And basically, yeah. what we try to encourage here is for men to come in in leather gear, all leather gear as much as possible. We encourage um, no running shoes, we encourage no dress shoes or suits, ties, dress shirts, polo shirts, and definitely no cologne. <laughs> why? Men why? do not like cologne. No? No, we like the natural smell of a man. Uh, is that. Enforced under punishment of expulsion. Yeah. You catch somebody with cologne, just yeah. sneaks in. We they're all the way. They're they're out. Out. So the other thing that I will do for you is just to give you that leather man look, a little crease, oh. just kind of fold you up here a little bit, make it's it a little flabby. more, make you look a little more relaxed. Acne scarred arms. The leather scene supposedly started with guys coming home from World War II who missed all the freewheeling sex and broing down the army he'd provided. As a result, a big military vibe runs through the whole scene. That biker hat they all wear was swiped from the Nazis, as was a lot of other gear like jackboots and riding crops. On my first night in the Eagle, I saw a couple dressed completely like biker cops. I spoke to you guys about this, be this before. This is the current Mr. Eagle. Oh. This is Rick Weber. So it's Mr. Eagle, New York City, 2007. This is uh, Thomas from Body's Magazine. Fashion yeah. Magazine. And the cameraman. The cameraman. This cameraman. is uh, Matthew. This is Rick Weber. <laughs> <laughs> Since grooming is so vital, a lot of leather bars have their own house barbers. This is Jake, the Eagles barber. The second he saw me, he said, I can't wait to get rid of that little Harry Potter thing you've got going. He was hands down the scariest fag I'd ever met, so I said, all right. I have to hold this mic up to my uh, mouth because it's loud as shit in here. Um, but we're over in the barber's corner. There's some uh, pretty heavy guy on guy on harness with guys around him action going on on the screen above the uh, bar. I've been watching. People have got like uh, wrist and armbands on. And I'm going to ask Christoph in a little while if that, if this stuff about left and right arm is really a to. They've fetishized the living shit out of the whole haircut process. They've got an actual barber's chair in one corner of the room. All the products they use are these 1950s era old man things like pomade and talcum powder. And they keep the chair facing the dick porn to keep you hard. The whole thing's a production. Over the course of my shave, I was slapped in the head, kissed in the neck, and gingerly humped, all while Jake assured me that he was taking it easy on me. I guess this is the leather equivalent of watching the big game in a lazy boy while being serviced by Hooters girls. Look at you! Adele. New person. Oh my no. God. Look at you. I'm not getting showered with adulation. Oh, oh my God! I think it's beautiful. You're a new man. Jake, Jake is a great barber. Have you looked in the mirror? I have. Uh, this haircut will get you a lot of attention. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think so. Getting back to my question about the armbands. You know, flagging is not done as much anymore. It's, it's a, something that you see very little of now in New York. You see, it started out, I believe, in San Francisco. Really but you really don't see it as much in New York. So anyone that wants to flag of whatever they're in the mood for. So anything that's on the left pocket, 
or left arm or the wrist indicates usually that you're on uh, top, you're the dominant of You're given it. Right. Anyone that has it on the right means they want to receive it. Some of them are very common sense, yellow. We kind of know what that means, yeah. piss. Red is fisting. Uh, the light blue here is um, a cocksucker or cocksucky. Can I ask what the other colors are? Okay. Sure. Guess what's uh, okay. Okay, after light blue? So we, we did these. So that's fist and piss, cocksucker. There is a navy blue, which is just basic fucking. Uh, black is SM. Okay. Pink. What do you think pink might be? Uh, dresses? I don't know. Transvestites? <laughs> Toys. Toys, okay, that makes sense. Toys. Um, Brown. I don't yeah. even think I want to even discuss Brown. That's fun. <laughs> Oh, we got a cab. Yes, and a big one. Just the ones I like. We went home and got a couple hours of sleep. Then I had to go help Christoph move his bike for the street sweeper. So we're back in Christoph's apartment. So far, the leather community doesn't seem too bad. Due to fair warning, I didn't venture into the upstairs bathrooms where supposedly a lot of the uh, a lot of the action is. Uh, the one thing everybody bought and like like one after the other sliding in was uh, like the lamel nitrate poppers. I think it's just like a kind of a concentrated stimulant or something. It, I thought it was supposed to like relax your ass, but he was saying that uh, most commonly use it just like right before getting in the sack or I don't know if they have a sack. I'm really not sure what it does actually. We'll give that a shot when it's, uh, when the mood is right. Um, eager to see what that what that scene's all about. We're, we're back at code night again. I'm actually dressed to code tonight. The uh, shirt's a little blousy. Now that we've been introduced to the scene, I think we'll just like cut back and enjoy the, uh, I don't know what it would be called, the fringe benefits? Not even that. <laughs> enjoy something. Yeah. Well, this is a collar. OK. You know, and basically, what a collar can stand for in many things. Someone gets collared. Uh, I'm somebody's. They're a boy, they're yeah. a slave. It's really, it really identifies with being more of a submissive. Yeah. A bottom, if you would, a submissive boy. These, these are what we call a ball stretcher. Yeah. So your balls come through. They go through that? Yeah. They How go much through. are those? Or? These range from like 12 and up. Can I try that one on? Or? I guess I well, probably have to figure out my size, well, wouldn't I? We start at one inch. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. And they're not easy to get on. Some guys can get them on really quickly, some guys you need to really struggle. So it's a matter of just taking this like this uh -huh. and just kind of just dropping them pop in. them in. As soon okay. as you got them in, you're able just to pull out and push this up, up that way. I may have to help you to uh, the right, so. Oh, and now I'll drop in like that? Okay. Okay, and then you let go. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It can hurt. It's not bad, though. I do want a shot of my disgusting looking balls in this thing. Okay. All right. No new just, frontiers here. I don't know if you can show that or not. But... And so you just wear this around. You can wear this around the entire day. Okay, so let's say you're going to be... Christoph helped me get fully geared up, and finally, I was ready to experience the leather world as a leather man. First stop, the fabled upstairs bathroom. I'll see how it turns out. How do I get there? I... That way. So, it's an intense scene in that, uh, in that bathroom. Jake had uh, previously told me that there's different sets of urinals, kind of with a wall in between them. And then, like, once the wall stopped at around here, like, chest level, it was chain link fence, so you were standing across from people, like, kind of like pissing at the same time. What they didn't tell me is that instead of pissing, you're usually, like, maybe having some guy go down on you while another guy is getting butt fucked right next to you. It was, uh, it's pretty Roman, and it smelled.
I decided to go up to the roof to cool off and get a little fresh air. We just came up to the roof, which is um, kind of the cigar lounge, and there's there's uh, there's some dudes like maybe ten yards that way who are just. When we got up here and walked down, um, one of them was going down the other, and now they're just fucking. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of empty. Otherwise, it's just like a nice little you know like like smokers lounge or whatever, cigar area. And they're just like totally going at it. You know, I really had a lot of fun with the Leathermen. All the weird rules, the fancy clothes, the butt grabbing and close contact and camaraderie. It was like being in a secret club for tough guys. At the same time though, it never got me hard or made me wanna fuck any of the guys I was hanging out with. So I guess there was this sort of disconnect there between me and the folks who were really into it and get off on being tied up and whipped. In any case, Dudes know how to party. Ah! <laughs> oh no, 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 you can get here. He's Do it, Wim. He's a Wim! I've just got, I've got sensitive nips. Here we go. 